started the idea uh, came that how can children be themselves so the name also is given by children uh, when we discussed with them they they came up we were thinking swayam siksha and i don't what not but they came up with idea of be me and it just we just loved it and then it uh, now the idea we are extending it to faculties and parents be me is all about being yourself being myself so when we are being ourselves uh then we are preserving and nurturing our individuality right so individuality became important part so when we were coming up with this idea me and co-founder prakash we used to sit together read book throughout the night and think how do we do that so and then again another thing came like i can be myself but i live in a community so there is a there is a lot of scope of co-creation and i need to take care of others need as well and that's when our main uh, element parliamentary decision making came into picture so once a week we all come together to decide on our our uh, whatever need we want to fulfill through be me as a child as a faculty as a parent so we decide uh, through this need Uh, so we were thinking uh, should we start something on our own in bangalore and uh, our idea was to uh, uh, stick uh, like have a campus in bangalore uh, and then within the city uh, i have seen uh, most of the alternate schools are in uh, outside of bangalore and uh, we wanted to cater to children inside the city and uh, uh, what we saw was like the the main challenge was to uh, uh, like Uh, afford the rent and then real estate part uh, but what we thought was uh, if uh, we need to give this kind of education uh, not everybody can afford to go to outskirts of bangalore so we must be uh, uh, doing something about this and that's how we uh, started working on this idea and we were wondering okay what kind of uh, alternate education uh, center we want to start and then we looked at uh, different philosophies we we had arohi philosophy, philosophy exposed Uh, because of our children and then uh, uh, we looked into jiddu krishnamurthy philosophy then we looked at other uh, indian uh, uh, education reformers philosophies like gandhi vivekananda etc and uh, later uh, one year before this uh, i had attended one uh, conference called uh, learners uh, uh, society uh, learner society and conference lsuc in pune in 2013 and uh, i was exposed to sudbury valley school uh, uh, literature uh, in that conference and uh, that's where i think the our whole uh, thought process got converged into and uh, we decided to start uh, uh, the uh, like the uh, uh, bimi uh, based on uh, democratic uh, schooling uh, concept so this element of parliamentary meetings which is kind of a decision making body it has evolved very nicely over period of time so first year it was all about how do we use this space and children were also not very clear about what they can bring in as an agenda but now i can just share one example where one child wanted to keep uh, dogs in bimi and he uh, found one puppy on a road like mother dog was there and four five puppies were there and he just took one puppy and came and he started taking care of it and all and then it came to parliament because we cannot decide alone and the various angles and aspect regarding uh, that whole uh, keeping puppy in bimi came about that child was so attached to that puppy he kept that puppy for two day took care cleaned everything but then some children expressed that you just you know took one child from mother and then that the the child who got the puppy was also in tears and then another faculty brought in how the puppy was handled like you know lifted and all and what all we need to consider when we take such decision and the child who brought the puppy he himself agreed that i should just go and give back this puppy to his family it was a lovely experience we we had through parliament meeting so we have a big banyan tree in center of bimi and then children are allowed to climb so uh, there were lot of anxiety in parent community regarding you know child falling and so it kept on coming on our whatsapp group and different platforms so whatever we decide for children we decide with them so then we took this agenda to parliament from parent community side parents are not part of parliamentary process 
like they don't attend parliament but we can always take agenda so faculty group took this agenda that parents are concerned so what do we do do we put net underneath the uh, tree to safeguard and all uh, and many aspects came we discussed we discussed and then uh, it actually addressed very beautifully uh, some children say that you know we are being very mindful when we are climbing if we think that we are going to fall will not if we put a net then we will stop being mindful and it was we didn't think about this when we were talking to parents so we just we just shared what children had shared uh, in our parent community we shared uh, through a mail that this is what children discussed and we have decided as a group not to put any safety net and we will be safe and mindful about it and parent community all anxiety got settled now uh, that at least for now it is not being discussed in the groups and they are okay with that seeing back uh, back at now at 10 years what i have learned and experienced few things which i really wanted to share is the first thing is the way the they look at failure failure is something for them it is like what next what can be done next as a parents me and my husband really wanted our kids to uh think failure as part of their life and just move on and that they have learned beautifully part of this bimi journey and the second thing is figuring out attitude once they decide if they want to learn something it's all about figuring out they just explore and figure out how to learn and go about it that also we really like here the next thing what i want to tell is the outstation and the outdoor trips which is part of the bimi system bimi environment where they get to plan their trip they have a real life experience they really explore the real world which is beyond textbooks another thing which is part of the bimi environment is community days this is something where they all come together they plan their food and the entertainment of the day they uh, this is something which is a real experience what i can tell is what i have learned what i probably would have learned in my 20s they learn at the young age the another thing is uh, the decision making decision making is a skill but here the kids inherit this decision making skill beautifully they analyze they know to analyze the pros and cons and they own the consequence of their own decisions and if i can keep go going on the beautiful thing here uh, we call them as facilitators faculty actually we call them here as saka each saka know uh, they understand the principle of bimi so beautifully and they give space to each child the way they nurture each child they gave the environment for the each child is something which we cherish and that is priceless overall if i want to talk about it bimi is not just a system or a school it is an environment and as a parents we are really really happy because they learn life skills beyond textbooks and general knowledge and we are very totally excited to be part of this bimi journey so for me bimi is the place uh, everything about this place is really fun and it makes me feel free i can do whatever i want and It just makes me happy whenever I come to this place. I forgot to forget about everything that's stressing me out, and I just enjoy being here. At Bimi, most of us look forward is outstation event. Each kid decide where to go. They research. They speak out. They decide. They plan. Decide the place with consensus vote. Planning and executions happen as a team with the within the top set budget. Bimi is like. more than a physical uh, place you know it transcends the concept of a school and it's really more than what you'd call like a traditional i mean even learning community it even transcends the concept of community i think not left behind is the lady faculty who dreamt of having a unique experience of walking along the historical dandi path a trek of nearly 378 km across 47 village from sabarmati ashram to dandi the coastal surat is a compelling is compelling at this stage the team was of 15 members strong with an varied age group of 7 to 60 the trek had no specific intention though 
but it was a check on body and mind endurance understanding the distance by walk versus vehicle culture nature uniqueness of the place as we pass by so bimi everything runs on democratic principles and um, um over a period of time we we started seeing the um, fall typical faults that a democracy faces uh like uh, when we when you go with voting uh, then majority votes and there is a small minority which doesn't feel heard or um, they start uh, feeling like um, their voice doesn't matter or uh, decisions when they are taken based on the majority vote they um, uh, it sometimes may not turn out for everybody's good so these uh, flaws started emerging um somewhere uh, second third year of our um of our functioning and uh, that is when we kind of came across uh, the concept of sociocracy and um <clears throat> the first time we we saw that was when we uh, went for idec uh, in bangalore um in 2018 Uh, so we we participated in a session on sociocratic sociocratic decision making and i was very impressed by it and um, then i spoke about it to others who who were there with me on in the conference so parent parliament um, was like a, uh, like an effort to um, extend the decision making process to the parent community as well um we we noticed that things that that were um, uh, that that were that impacted parents um so, somewhere uh, uh, the facilit among facilitators we were discussing and we were seeing how what's the way forward and all of that and we were extremely uncomfortable making those decisions without involving the parents in the decision making processes so and uh, from parent community also there were questions or queries that were coming in and um, ev- every time it was looking like uh, um, uh, we we were being viewed as an authority or we were feeling that with that we are becoming an authority and that was not a space we wanted to operate from so we, we in one of the our um, half yearly meetings where the entire community comes together we proposed uh, that we would like to try this out and this is the reason behind trying it out so parents were okay with this and we piloted that for a semester and we tried to bring in all the decisions that impact parents um like what kind of parent connect events we will have what kind uh, what are the types of uh, what are the questions or queries that are there in our in the in the parents mind and uh, or some things where we needed the support from parent community we'll we'll put that as an agenda or so and as, uh, at times uh, there will be uh, projects that would require um, involvement f- from all people involved either parents uh, us children etc so all of these things come into the parent parliament format uh, and uh, we 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 meet once a month uh, now, as of now that's the frequency at which we meet and it's still evolving it's a very new thing and it's still evolving and we will see how this goes so uh, everything in uh, bimi kind of works on connection and the feeling of community and the relationships that we create among all the community members um and a lot of things uh, in bimi happen because of the support that we receive from the parents uh there was a time when um uh, we we did one round of triathlon prakash led a lot of children he uh, mentored them through uh, all the triathlon events and we uh, and uh, that particular time the triathlon itself was organized by a group outside of bimi and we just registered as participants um and that event went on successfully and the next year uh, there were more enthusiastic participants and um, uh, and everybody started practicing and everything but then the event organizers uh, decided not to organize the triathlon that left a lot of children in a lot of distress 
and we were like uh, children raised why can't we organize our own triathlon event and uh, at that time it felt like no there's no way we can pull something so big off uh, but then we had a discussion with the pa parents uh, also uh, how how can we do about it so there was a group a small groups of people discussing everywhere and somehow uh, it emerged uh, a plan emerged with uh, one parent finding the venue and uh, one parent uh, some uh, uh, driving the whole thing and we we finally ended up having a tri tri triathlon event of organized for bimi community and but then towards the end somebody said can someone external part participate and then there were some people from who are not part of bimi community but they also participated and that was a very heartwarming thing to watch and witness um, children get inspired by uh, activities that are happening around them so um, we bring in a lot of that in the space itself for example today we we had uh, one uh, volunteer parent who was doing stitching and uh, it uh, uh, she just came and she was she was she was stitching and two more children she, they got interested and they wanted to know what she was doing and they joined hands with her so um, we just create environments for learning we create conditions for interest and we give them a lot of uh, different different uh, fields where that can possibly be the field of interest because uh, only sometimes talking doesn't help they can't visualize but when they are seeing things in action it is very easy for them to relate or to uh, try things out we would like to talk about this uh, the student uh, we have she i, I remember when she was 6 year old Mm, she would be intrigued with colors and textures so i remember uh, on a daily basis she would come she would mix colors and work on surface textures and she would do a lot of art uh, particularly uh, mixing colors and working with different materials and through and through then i i realized one day she was looking at a fashion book and she was uh, very interested uh, in how the figures were drawn and she asked me questions about you know what is the drawing what why, why is she standing in a certain way and then i remember together we did some of uh, stencil work where the uh, and you know slowly um, that now the child is actually doing uh, fashion shows and i was just randomly drawing and then it turned into a dress i asked my sakha and then she said that you can do a fashion show if you want i said okay she told me to draw five seven more dresses i drew that and then we did our first fashion show another one of my friends uh, also drew a few dresses we both did a fashion show together which was in pegasus and now i've done three fashion shows and i've judged a fashion show well i was really happy because everyone was proud of me saying you did a great job and that was a feeling i can never forget It was really joyful. Uh, Bimi stands on uh, two pillars, and uh, if I want to name them, then uh, one is faith in child and faith in life. Uh, when I am talking about faith in life, let us look at it. What does it mean? Then faith in life, uh, we are coming from that perspective that every child loves to learn, and every child has ability to learn. that is what we mean by when we say faith in child now the other aspect is faith in life faith in life is life is you live life and there are thousands of opportunity knocking at the at your door to learn so these are the two things on which we me stand stands now if i want to then we were reflecting that okay then what what is our role what is environment role and what are the core values which will make our environment because now we don't have any role to play life is providing the learning opportunity and children have that ability to learn and they love their love for learning is there we need to just you know nurture that then it, the focus comes on environment so if i want to put it out the core values of be me uh, then it is you know trust in the child that we know that the child's world child know the best best 
we are outsider for them so can we fully trust on their ability to learn and can we provide that environment which nurture that uh, that and uh, their trust means they learn on their own they confidently live their day in and day out so we thought that environment like if i uh, take analogy of a uh, tree then soil is what uh, which has those nurturing element so then we said okay love uh, care and uh, acceptance and support these are the four elements we could we could think about when i am visual, visualizing myself as an adult in environment so whatever happens whatever situation may arise can i operate from that you know very core of that that yes i believe in child i trust in child and can i operate from the space of love uh, in which environment they can you know fully uh, freely be themselves and then uh, live with that inner trust on themselves so then environment when we are talking about environment again this is one thing which i have discussed so many times with parents as well whenever it comes to rich environment from somewhere i i, I don't know but that becomes you know then we have all facilities in the environment like if swimming pool and then play uh, playground and this and that if you um, but i think when i am talking about environment i'm not coming from uh you know only stimulation point of view so when we started bimi we we had that desire strongly and then from past 7 years i can say that that uh actually bimi is a um bimi's community and it is creating that uh, nurturing platform for children and we it is it is you can say it's incubation place and you come here and the entire world is classroom so if we have a need of swimming we go and establish swimming pools are there we can you know even use them facilities facilities is not which we are focusing on so if i come back to again creating that nurturing platform with lot of love care support acceptance for each other in environment then how one individual can be and with that platform child decides in which direction to go so if i want to give an example then we have one child uh, she has decided to go fully academically right now she is in conventional school and she's thriving there she's loving that uh, you know writing exams and all that while we have another child who has decided to continue with lot of projects and right now he's working on one of the projects he's both of them are alumni of bimi uh, this uh, child has continued uh, you know learning on his own almost homeschooling himself through projects while this child has uh, you know decided to uh, go into that world and then find her place in that world so when we are i'm talking about that platform uh, we just want to focus on that 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 nurturing platform and then we want to leave it to child in which direction they want to grow because of this bimi journey the best takeaway for me as a as a as a parent has been that I have been actively involved in the child's education and learning and growth all through. It was not just putting the school, uh, the kid to a school, and forget what it is. We are part and parcel of their every activity. Yeah, kids usually come, you know, with a generic idea that they can do anything with wood, and then we kind of guide them about what are the limitations of wood, what are the designs that we go ahead and can implement in wood. Okay, so one of the guy came with. a video telling that i want to make wings so in the video you see a guy standing and then he presses a button so a wing kind of opens up like this and when we did the inquiry it came up to the price like we have to spend 16000 for the hydraulic system to work so we said okay let's do something very simply as a mechanical contraption so what we did was we did a wooden base so on that we made wooden sticks like this and then okay once we have this co concept like this is how it's going to be so what we th th thought of was okay how do we do the moving parts so the moving parts what we came up with was we fix pvc as a track on both sides and then fix this upper piece 
and then we found a twine that goes from this end to the back and then we put two straps so the guy can wear it and then that's how the idea came but then we kind of tinkered for a week uh, to in bimi community i think we attended one book club wherein we got introduced to this book uh, non violent communication and uh, that is when we started uh, reading that book and also started implementing in our lives yeah this book made lot of changes in our life it brought small small changes how to express our feelings rather than blaming somebody how i felt about a situation a small example i would say recently which happened in our family um i have seen uh, um conflicts coming onto the breakfast table little regularly and uh, it's a morning rush all of us i have to leave to office kids have to go to school and i said that how come these days conflicts is coming onto the table you're putting conflicts for kids most of the days and <laughs> Yeah, I think I was a little upset about the whole thing, not about what he was saying, but the way he was saying, the word he was using every day, which is not even true. Maybe he was just assuming. And yeah. then uh, after kids left, we had a small discussion, and then I expressed that I felt very sad because you brought up that point that you give conflicts to kids every day. So then he understood. I think he understood only because I expressed my feeling, what I am feeling inside, that I am sad that you spoke this. Then yeah. he understood the thing at a a uh, very normal level yeah and then and i understood that i blamed her i said that you are putting conflicts every day but instead of that if i have chosen um, i have observed that conflicts is coming onto the table every day it would have been much more lighter <laughs> yeah and we had a happy moment after that <laughs> when we started bini we started with blank slate absolutely nothing on uh you know no laws no guidelines we started with children and we did everything all all systems that bini has evolved with children and one of the system is uh, jc which is a judiciary committee so the whole idea was to create a platform where expression can flow uh and it has helped when we started there were uh, some conflicts in environment between specific group of people and then uh generally uh, if you are young then you go to an adult and say that aunty this is what is happening or if you are in you know 10 12 year in that age that age range what generally i have seen personally is you just don't speak about it because you want to fit in in the group you want to be friends and you don't want to lose your friends so you just kind of um i don't want to say compromise but don't want to talk about it <laughs> so this platform actually helped children express they came together talked about what difficult uh, things and tried to uh, solve their difference in order right and i remember during one of those conversations one of the children uh, mentioned when you look at uh, the case paper the way the case paper is designed it looks whoever put the case is right and whoever the case is put on is wrong that yeah. image is already built even before the conflict resolution process starts mm. so can we uh, redo uh, the case paper can we rethink jc mm. this happened around 4 years back right uh, mm. somewhere around that time so uh, that, that's when we kind of started uh, 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 of course there is a semester reflection that happens but a deep end level of re reflection of what is the system for what is its purpose and is it serving the purpose um so from there we started thinking what system does jc serve and at the end of the day uh, through jc what what we would want uh, is uh, uh, is how to manage relationships how to have difficult conversations with your your best friend some action of your best friend is hurting you and you you it is difficult to talk about it right to to the person and uh, how to have that conversation so now we are like thinking of bringing these aspects in um moving away from a uh, somebody else solving an issue for you into you yourself empowering yourself to solve it for yourself Uh, conflicts that have been long standing they repeat uh, repeat and go over a 
long period of time until it is really resolved. So that's where step four and the judiciary committee steps in, and we try to resolve it through various methods. It can be an expression circle. It can be talking, uh, talking one on one with the with each of the people involved. It can be talking in group. It can be let's talk about it. It can be a panchayat. Yeah. <laughs> so there are various methods at step four that would be identified to um, to solve the issue. Learning necessarily happens when uh, when facilitator or a teacher understands a student. That understanding is very important because. Each child has a different personality, and if that personality is not understood and not groomed, th the learning will fail. That's what I believe, and uh, I'm happy that in BME that individualistic approach is there. This is a self-directed learning, as they call it, uh, where children, um, where children kind of uh, express their demands or needs. and those are taken forward and enough resources and stimulus is provided so that they can do more exploration with it the one thing i really enjoy about bimi is uh, the fact that outstations and outdoors get a lot of real life experience and not just other things like textbooks and stuff it made me understand how the actual world can be and not just the inside thing And the other thing I really enjoy is the people and the friends I've made. That's something I'll always keep. Uh, the thing that inspired me and um, the thing I liked most about BME was it made me uh, more confident and it made me make uh, like it made me do things again and again and not just uh, leave it after doing it once. Uh, it made me uh, realize what, like there's a process to do everything and it made me. Uh, realize that i mean i can do things on my own i don't need to be dependent i can uh take things up and take it to completion so that was one of the, my, my main learnings and uh, how i chose my subjects for my nios um so i wanted to take uh not too hard subjects but i wanted to cover uh, a wider range currently i am doing a few projects one of it is like study based like what about studies and the other one is heal recover live so heal recover live is like um i want to quote organization but that seems like a humongous word so i'm just going to tell heal recover live is basically like this organization i go with that where we're trying to bring sustainability into a normal practice at home so like we make uh, videos on youtube instagram and um, other platforms about like how you can do sustainability easily at home like like how it's accessible to everyone so like editing filming recording research all of that comes with that so some of the videos we've done is like how to save electricity at home or how to save water at home or some comedy videos about how zomato is doing plastic neutral currently and um, other things like how to what climate change takes impact all those type of thing is currently what some of the videos and we're working on videos like um how to make compost or how to make bioenzyme which is one of the sustainable things that you can do so those are some of the things that we're working on i mainly do like um editing scripting research and like i'm the camera man or camera person and impana does i am the person who speaks in the videos and explains the topics and i also edit a few videos so actually satvika started this so i just joined her because we're best friends yeah yeah So I had started this with my cousins actually, but then they went to tenth. So they're like, "No, we'll ditch you, Satvika. I can't do much about it." So then they left, and then I started doing by myself for some time, and then Impana joined. So that time it became like that, and now we're doing it together. I think for me it mainly started out of fear because I'm scared of death, and so for me like climate change could kill all of us gives the thought freaks me out. So I was like, if I could change somehow, how could I do that? So that's how I started. So for me Satvika came up to me and she was like Impana do you want to join this with me do you want to do this project with me and then I actually from the beginning I wanted to do something for climate change when I'm older so I was like okay why not let's try and then yeah one thing I have tried uh, uh, in Bimi in last 4 5 years is uh, 
letting children learn swimming on their own. Uh, and this came uh, uh, actually very naturally to me because when I uh, learned swimming, it was in my native place uh, in an open well. And uh, there was a, a method to learn swimming by using a, a, a bundle of corn stems, uh, uh, which is tied on your back and then you get into the water. And uh, as you get comfortable with uh, water and then you start moving and then uh, getting comfortable more, more and more, you start removing uh, corn stems from that bundle and at some point you will be off that bundle. And uh, I, I thought, okay, oh, this is a very natural way of learning and then uh, this can be done uh, uh, here as well uh, for the children. And uh, what I did was uh, I took a batch of children and then uh, I wanted to try this with them. Uh, but I, in, in city, I wanted to try it with a uh, tube, swimming tube. And we decided to use a swimming pool in uh, Kagdaspura. And then uh, I used to take children in my car. Uh, uh, we, you, we used uh, swimming tubes and uh, I let them uh, play in a uh, uh, pool with uh, full air in the swimming tubes. And a uh, couple of sessions later, about say four or five sessions, uh, I check with them, are they comfortable with uh, uh, playing in water and then are they able to uh, see how comfortable they can be with water without really wor worrying about the fear of drowning. And once they became comfortable with uh, that, I check with them when I can reduce uh, uh, air in the swimming tube. And as and when somebody was ready, I, uh, I would actually re uh, uh, take out air to the extent they are comfortable and over a period of few sessions later so they were very comfortable and then they start they got off the swimming tube one of my favorite uh, memories i have about this school is when ati was young when we had when pimi was on the other side of the building um, uh, she loved the school so much that she wouldn't come back home i would stay and she will say 10 minutes extension and she will say 20 minutes extension and she will not come back. There have been times when I've stayed for an hour in the school waiting to get her back uh, back home and it was annoying to, to be able to do that. To an extent where I had to tell her I'm going to sue you. I'm going to give a complaint on you about the fact that you make me wait and Namrata and I have had a laugh about it because I had to actually come to that level to actually bring her back home. Um, and I have constantly joked with the facilitator saying, please start a hostel. Keep the children here only. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they want to come back. It's fine. Let them be here. So the other thing that has been very fascinating to actually to understand how learning takes place in, in a uh, alternative school like this is the experience of um, the experience itself. You know, couple of things come to mind. My daughter was responsible, was participant of both the triathlon that took place a couple of years back, and uh, she was also part of the Gandhi uh, uh, walk that we did, um, and. Uh, both these were experiences that I don't think any other school would have uh, actually considered. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. How did you come to know of Rini? So when my kid was two years old, I was researching for uh, some alternative schools because we were not very keen to put our son in a very traditional school. Another interesting incident which I'd like to mention about is we had already put our son in Bimi, but the school was yet to start. In between, uh, I run an art space called Lahe Lahe, which is in Bangalore. And we had a summer camp for kids. And uh, generally we've seen when kids come for summer camp, their parents come, enroll the kids and the kids go in. There's hardly any interaction between the kids and us when they enroll, at least at the time of registration. But here, uh, these two parents, they came in and they asked me if the kids can spend 10 minutes before they would register 
they would like to check out whether the camp is for them and then they'll decide whether they'll register or not so i said fine go ahead and uh, so they they observed it for 10 minutes and then they registered and i i really like this feeling where it, the choice was given to the child to decide whether he should or she should you know join the summer camp or not and i just spoke to that mothers afterwards and i came to know that they are from bimi i felt such a uh, it was such a good surprise because the fact that i had put my son in the same school that these kids are from that the school gives such an environment where they are given the freedom to make that choice of joining something or not i think that was a big big uh, thing for me and i was really happy about the fact that i had put my son in bimi yeah. so for me i think bimi uh, the definition of bimi has so I was in Bimi for five years, and the definition changed almost every one or one and a half years. When we started, it was all about being together with everyone, and then it evolved from there. And I feel like as I grew, I felt like I was finding new aspects of Bimi. And I think the best way that I can define it is that it's hardly definable. So we thought it is always important to give them a choice how they want to take up their education. I feel personally that kids should have a lot of love for learning when they are doing whatever they are doing. It shouldn't be forced. Like homeworks, it is not like a chore for them to do. It should be a joy for them to do. If that is the way kids want to learn, uh, I would always want to look out for that kind of school. And that's how we ended up in Bini. What I could explore here is that being part of Bimi. It's just not being part of any other school. They start the day by planning. They greet people here. They understand what are the things is important and what are the things is urgent. Apart from the basic school activities and uh, other priorities that they have, uh, what I could understand is they have been in a situation to figure out that what their interest lies, where they want to uh, explore more further, and what is important to them and what is not so important to them. So you will have to figure out that what you want to do and most importantly, what you don't want to do. So that's where I see that, you know, Bimi coming into the picture has given this initiative, they had given this an option to figure out or to think as a child that what he wants to do I rather mean, than we should fuel that interest to give her a way as to see if she develops more interest to it. And eventually this is what happened. We spoke to faculties here, facilitators here. They also came in forward. She also came in forward, designed a plan. And let's start with a fashion show. I would like to talk about uh, our faculty team. Uh, right now we are about nine uh, faculty members. And uh, this uh, faculty team is divided into two parts, uh, two teams. Uh, one is the Sakha team and the other one is the content team. And uh, Sakha, we are uh, we have about six uh, faculty working as uh, Sakhas. Uh, Sakha faculty is a mentor faculty for uh, a few set of children. And currently, we have about uh, uh, ten to twelve children assigned to each Sakha faculty. And the role of uh, Sakha is uh, to uh, give uh, emotional space uh, for children. And uh, with Sakha faculty. Children can share anything and everything and that will be kept confidential, it will not be shared with anyone else. Uh, uh, another role of uh, faculty, uh, SACA faculty is uh, to uh, observe, do document the observations about how children are learning different things. For me, BME is, um, BME is um, introspecting uh, and looking within myself as well as understanding the world and how I interact with others and how other people interact and throughout throughout the years uh, i think i've over the years like i've ex explored or like um, thought deeply thought about different things but and then now that i'm even passed out i every time i reflect on what bimi was or my years in bimi i keep thinking about how at different points uh, in time I would, I had like a different, a certain worldview or a certain um, way that I should live my life. Uh, but then, and then how that contrasted to another point in time. And then 
as now i've even passed out uh, i also learn about like how other people in the world think about be me yeah. be me is a place where i can just have fun learn different things from different people and it could be anyone from some from someone who is 7 years old to 14 15 or even 18 19 20 or even uh, one of the faculties so you, i can learn anything here and i can do whatever i want it's very flexible so that uh, that really makes me feel happy about uh, being in this uh, in being in bimi the thing with our stations and stuff in bimi it's all is really it's, i mean i don't want to say student managed but it's managed by like everyone you will see everyone helping out it's uh, for everything going on during the our station but you will also have this like core committee of people who are sort of running things uh, and and they're all like um, They're all ne- not necessarily older kids. Also, I've we've had outstations where the uh, committee is just like younger kids running the show, mm-hmm. and it's all gone well in the end. I mean, like we haven't lost people; no one's died. <laughs> so with trips, we went to many other trips. Also, these the ones we just said were just a few like adventure-based type, which we actually trained for. But we also went to places like Goa, where one of the most exciting things was to like sleep on the beach. So in Goa we slept without any tents we just had mats and sleeping bags and then we slept on the beach and we didn't know if um we didn't know if the water will reach yeah, us yeah. or not so we put all these bottles that we found on the beach just trash so we put them as markers and if it if the water reached the third what like third bottle third marker then that means we have to get up but then we all fell asleep and i don't think anyone kept track of where the water <laughs> general children when they are given the freedom they find their own path so when they find their path they know where their weakness is and how to make use of their strength then they find the path and they move forward if we put them in the structure for example a person who is a capable of doing some level of mathematics you give them some other level of mathematics they find it difficult so if we find their level and give it supporting material then they with desire once a fulfillment comes in their doing they feel happy when they are happy and successful they then you need only guidance you don't need teaching for them because they have the guidance and desire is there they will move forward right material given at the right time to the right children they will move forward structure kills the children because the child needs to fit into the structure then only it has to get into the structure is molding the child molding the stunting the growth of the mind when the mind is stunted obviously whatever follows after will also be stunted when there is freedom when there is good motivation and desire then everything blossoms beautifully like a flower